Okay, let's have a look at a Fisher game. This is a very short loss. There's 24 of you here. Okay, um, so this is, we're going to look, I think we should look at reverse chronological order, a Fisher's memorable games book. Because uh, he won against uh, Spassky in 1972. There's a five year gap we're talking about if we go from the back of the book 1967. Now, ideally, we really want to check out Fisher games as late as possible up to 1972 because he was at his peak. Uh, I know he had gaps because he took time out of chess, but um, so we're looking right near the end of the book, Memorable Games book, uh, and and Geller did have a very good record, F being Geller, uh, against Fisher. And um, let's see what happened. So Fisher was white, e4. We have the Sicilian defense. Um, if you have any comments, I'll just speak them out in the video so we don't have to show the comments box. Uh, so, um, okay, so uh, now we have knight f3. D6. So an open Sicilian, and you'd think I think you know Fisher and Kasparov are real experts in this this A6. So it's amazing that Fisher lost quite quickly with the white pieces when he you know played it a lot with the black pieces. Uh, so how on earth would this happen? Uh, happen? Poison pawn accepted is is the variation we're going to go into. Bishop G5. Okay, so E6. And then he plays f4. So he's he's inviting black for this poison pawn variation, this uh, cheeky queen move to um, b6. And then to tr just try and win that b2 pawn. Okay, so um, the invitation is accepted. So there's no time for queen d2 because then queen b2. Okay. Yeah, but the thing is, um, Gell is the one, you know, eating the material here. Queen d2. So Gela takes on b2. Now we see rook b1. Yeah, this but this is an amusingly called, called uh, you know, the poison pawn variation. So the, the pawn has poison. And people know that when they play it. Oh, this is the poison pawn variation. So the material comes at a cost that it's going to be painful, potentially. Uh, so Fisher he carries on aggressively here by playing f5. So it looks like a dangerous position for black with not many developed pieces. Uh, you know, like these guys are still in the box. E6 is uh, a target, maybe for bishop c4 later. So, um, how does black react? Plays knight c6. So takes, knight takes c6. So, okay, so what's happened so far? Black's got these uh, central pawns, and the bishops are still on their start squares. And now Fisher plays another aggressive move, e5. Okay, and it's probably too dangerous for Black to play d takes here. Um, maybe uh, something like bishop f6 and knight e4 would be dangerous, but let's have a look at what happens. So knight d5, Fisher took and played bishop e2, which carries with it just the idea of maybe castling or rook b3 or bishop h5, lots of uh, potential dangerous threats here. All right, so does black have the defensive resources? Um, this this reminds me uh, quite fascinating analogy to a, a Sparth Nun game with Sparth being black and managing to win material and then come back and, and beat none. None's really like dangerous theoretically. And this is what like one of the more theoretical, you know, variations in the Sicilian defence, this poison pawn variation. Uh, so Bishop E2, so what what did uh, Geller do here? Nothing spectacular. He just gobbled another pawn, believe it or not. He he took on E five. So is white really just cutting off the king from casting now? Isn't that like sufficient compensation, just a castle? Um, bishop h5, there might be g6. There's also like rook b3, uh, maybe. So where is black 
King, uh, where is the Black King going to find King safety? Okay, so White does castle and Black plays check. And now, actually, he just plays Rook F8. So it's really up to White to, for the for the proof here. Um, he's got to prove that his position, um, you know, has something for the material. Um, at the moment, you know, Black's king could potentially crawl over maybe to the king side after takes king f8, and then king g8 later, bishop d7, rook f8, black would be fine. You can imagine that situation. So this rook f8 seems to be, um, you know, a very good move in the circumstances. You know, how how can white try and uh, win this position? It's the central control. Look at all these, these squares which are being controlled. Um you know by by the by the pawns whoops um there's a lot of central control here uh so opening troll you're saying um materialism is prevailing and the the day blues has said after 13 e5 the engine evaluation immediately changes from a slight plus to white to nearly a full pawn for black let's just look at though day blues on move 13 e5 before before we carry on so we're at move 17 at the moment we go back to move 13 so does anyone know what white should have played here then instead of e5 uh, though day blues is there a good move here because i think there was apparently a missed opportunity <laughs> so justin nice how does one troll in the opening well um the queen's grabbing attention, I suppose, by by munching that pawn. It's getting a lot of attention. Trolls get a lot of attention. <laughs> well, they, they 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 want attention. I don't know. So rook b3 is that good from an engine perspective of this position? Okay, so fish has gone maybe too too crazy here. Then did he go too crazy giving up two pawns? As long as the check rook f8, it looks as if what what is white doing here? And this this is towards you know the peak of Fisher's strength 1967 at the end of the book the memorable games book so okay he plays actually c4 he's trying to bust up the king maybe get to d8 of course it'll be a disaster takes will be queen d8 mate so otherwise these pawns are getting weaker there's no way of defending d5 with bishop b7 so that seems like a logical strike maybe this is what Fisher's had in mind all along if d4 then maybe bishop f3 to c6 that would be devastating. So, what does Geller play here? He takes on f1. Okay. And now, surely there's there's some major issue to deal with here. He can't take and he can't play d4 because of bishop f3, it would seem. So how does black defend this position? Something subtle happened, actually. The weakness of the last move, you'll notice that there's no pressure on b7 now. It's possible bishop b7 holding up d5 without compromise. So why didn't Fisher take uh, bishop takes f1 here? Uh, is there is there a refutation of bishop takes f1? I think bishop takes f1, then bishop f3 wouldn't be possible. So maybe if we, if we check out um, bishop takes f1 as a new variation. Then maybe in fact d4 is now possible without bishop f3. And now if we try and go back then you know e4 maybe. And that these pawns are looking menacing. So so just a simple exchange on f1. And it looks as though white's chances are literally evaporating after. Um, so this, this looks a bit tragic. The scene is set for some sort of tragedy. Um, I'll just select from the list. Hold on. So rook takes f1. So it doesn't look as convincing now. After bishop b7. Okay. Oh, sorry, I put it on autoplay. Whoops. So bishop b7. Hmm. Bishop g4. I seem to have stuck it on an autoplay. Is that the play button there? I'm obscuring the play button. Whoops. Pardon me. Bishop g4. 
So attacking e6, but it looks as though, look, the bishops are looking much better than before. Uh, so what uh, is going to do here? In fact, he just takes now, because the rook's now protecting d8, he just takes on c4. There's no queen d8 or anything. Okay, he's offering e6, but as soon as bishop e6, maybe there's queen d3 hitting queen and rook. This is a loose rook. These pieces are starting to feel loose. This is the kind of tactical backfire. When I've played this as white, you think you've got some pressure and then bang, your position just explodes sometimes because as soon as black's pieces come alive, there's a lot of unpegged pieces in white's position because that winning that pawn isn't just winning the pawn, it's control of the center and key squares and white's position is loose, it's not like reinforced. Black's got this dangerous pass pawn now on c4, so he takes on e6. And now we see queen d3 hitting queen and rook. It it doesn't look like an attack at all now, does it? What do you think, guys? White's really haven't hasn't got enough here. He just it seems to be losing. Materialism did pay here. The pawn wasn't poisoned after all. What what do you think? So we're nearly uh, at the end of the game, in fact. Um, shall I just stretch out so I can see the, the score sheet? So queen e1, hitting e5. Right, so the day blues, bishop g4 seems to be in a poor move. Either bishop f3 or bishop d1 looks better. So at move 20, you're saying... Uh, so instead of bishop g4, so bishop f3 or bishop d1. Yeah, bishop f3, that would be interesting for more pressure on d5. Bishop d1, I'm not sure the idea of that. Uh, maybe, um, no, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, so let, let's, let's go back. So queen d3, it's looking dire. So queen e1, okay, attacking the e-pawn. It can be easily defended with bishop e4 now indirectly defended bishop g4 and now the rook finally comes into game rook b1 threatening rook b1 it's it's the end of white now he's still he's two pawns down look at black's control over the center it's amazing the center's totally wiped out as far as central control the center of the battlefield here so um bishop d1 it's all a bit grovelly okay king the king moves now why did the king move that's interesting if rook b1 maybe there was bishop a4 check so the king maybe is going to c7 first to repair rook b1 after check actually it comes to e6 and here Fisher had enough, he resigned. Say the rook just went back. This is looking dire because of, of things like um rook b1 really. Rook rook b1, there's no there's no useful discovered check, is there? So so that was a short and sweet game. Um let's have a look. So poison pool variation, this is not how to play it with white evidently uh, so I mean Fisher had in the 1972 match a very quick loss in this very line against Spassky in fact uh, I think Spassky managed to trap the Queen it was like ridiculous trapping the Queen I think it was like a um, knight b3 or something um, so may, I think maybe knight b3 is an improvement over this um, I, th I thought the line might have been taking on f6 actually first and then um, bishop the, the line I thought was actually sorry not not knight c6 but um, actually I don't really know the theory does anyone know the theory of this this I think it's something like taking on f6 and bishop e2 I'm not really sure uh, but the theory is obviously evolving in this line quite a lot all the time 
but this this just looks like a plain loss after rook f8. It looks as though white slight you know slid downhill. Um, and uh, this is not the way to play. Just the central control is amazing for black. Absolutely amazing uh, with these bishops. Uh, <clears throat> so rook b1, you know, major threat, and then that's like um, that would have been the end of the game. Sorry, it, it, fin it finished earlier after king e6. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Let's let's save that and um, let's go on to another game. Okay.